Do you ever wonder why some SBA shops fail or fail to even get off the ground? Well, one of the answers might be your credit officer, and you can tell them I said that. Tune in for an episode BDOs are sure to love, and we'll have credit people saying, you know, that Ray Drew is a real... Hey, thanks for tuning into the Art of SBA Lending. Today, I wanted to highlight why, in my humble opinion, some SBA departments fail or just never really get the traction that they're looking for in the market. I was going to make the episode titled Why Some SBA Lenders Suck, but I thought that might be a little too harsh. Trying to keep the podcast as friendly as possible. Now, I'm not going to keep you waiting. I should. It would help me with my watch times, but I'm not. I'll tell you what it is right at the jump, but I highly recommend that you keep listening because I'm going to go into excruciating detail. The short answer is that there's a disconnect between sales slash the marketplace and credit, credit management, and most of the blame on credit, of course, but not the underwriters. I'm talking about the decision makers. Do you even want to be an SBA? That is the question banks really need to ask themselves before they jump in head first because SBA lending is a different breed of lending. We're doing riskier loans by nature. So at one end of the spectrum, if your credit appetite is too conservative, especially in today's uber competitive market, you're not going to book any loans. Now at the other end of the spectrum, if you try to do every deal, especially when you book a lot of startups and large unsecured or undersecured deals and just overall riskier credits, it's more likely that you're going to have higher defaults. There are risk in these. The SBA only covers 75% of your loss. And trust me, there's plenty of shops that come out swinging in the first couple of years and then they quickly come crumbling down. So let me now call out my fellow salespeople because this is a world I know very well. You lose a deal because your credit team turned it down and then you get mad because another bank did it. And you think to yourself, well, if they did it, then we should have been able to get it done too. That's not an assumption I'm willing to make today. Come back to me in two years and let me know how that loan did and the status of that shop as a whole. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ray, this is obvious. We know all of this. But wait, there's more. What about banks that go into SBA lending, but they don't want to do X or X, Y, and Z, you know? Oh, we don't do car washes because we had a car wash deal go bad in 1994. Some industries are riskier than others. Some property types are harder to liquidate. I get that. But you can't just say no to like an entire industry. You know, instead, establish guidelines that reflect the risk associated with those industries. You know, if you don't want to do a car wash at 90%, you only want to do it at 80% LTV. Fine, I get that. By the way, next time you hear a credit officer base a decision on an anecdotal piece of evidence and not like a large pool of data, just tell them they aren't following the science. It's poll tested and it seems to play well these days. All right, so let's say you just listened to what I said and now you've put together your credit box and it's reasonable and it's competitive and it's sustainable. Now it's the BDO's job to go out and find potential borrowers that fit that box and that will accept your terms. Here's where it gets tricky though. You've got to be steady and consistent in the marketplace. It could take 18 months to really build your reputation in the marketplace. Folks really want to understand what you do and what you don't do, what you're good at and what you're bad at. So if two years into this, you hit a few bumps in the portfolio, assuming your underwriting is up to par, and you start becoming super reactive and abruptly shifting and changing what you will and won't do, you're basically screwed. The marketplace just figured out what you do under the subsect of SBA, and now it's vastly different. That's no bueno. If you're working with brokers, for example, and they're going out looking for those types of deals that you do, and they're bringing them to you, and they serve them to you on a silver platter, and you've got to now say, we don't do that anymore because we had a deal go bad. They're going to totally lose confidence in you. That is rookie behavior. You can't do it. A constant, consistent message in the marketplace over the course of years and years with continuous execution is 
the only way to become a premier SBA lender in the market. It's rare that a lender is able to pull that off and sustain it, but when they do, it's glorious. I will say, if there is something in your underwriting process that's causing you to book loans that are going to early default, that's a problem. But nine out of 10 times, because SBA underwriters are so seasoned, the reason for default is usually just something out of left field. And they would have approved that same loan today, except they won't because they just had one go bad. Do you see the issue there? So to recap, there's three ways your head of credit slash owner of the bank slash chief lending officer, whatever, self-sabotages your SBA loan department. Number one, they wanna book conventional deals with an SBA guarantee. The marketplace is too smart to let you do that. You are chasing a rainbow and you will fail. Also, SBA doesn't want that. It's called credit elsewhere, bro. Number two, they go balls to the walls too early and get too concentrated in one thing. By the way, the way to fix this is not to stop making good loans in that concentration. It's to find ways to make good loans in other industries and other project types to diversify your portfolio. That's probably the most important job of a chief credit officer. Having a diverse portfolio will keep you protected. Finally, number three, they don't know what the heck they're doing. One month they're doing a bunch of Orange Theory fitnesses and then the next month they don't do gyms. Keeping a steady hand at the top is key. You're gonna have defaults. If you are diversified, you will be okay. As long as you are still doing prudent lending and underwriting to the SBA guarantee. So there you have it, some brilliant credit advice from a salesperson. If you disagree with anything, let us know. You know where to find us. We're here for the conversation. Come on the podcast, debate me. But I will warn you, I will edit it to make me look right. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. All right, that's it for this week. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode of The Art of SBA Lending. And if you have any feedback or suggestions, email me at ray at artofsba.com. Until next time, ta-ta.